Sunil Manohar, Sunny. Gavaskar pronunciation born the 10th of July 1949 is a former Indian international cricketer who played from the early 1970s to late 1980s for the Bombay cricket team and Indian national team. Widely regarded as one of the greatest test batsmen and best opening batsmen in test cricket history, Gavaskar set world records during his career for the most test runs and most test centuries scored by any batsman. He held the record of 34 test centuries for almost two decades before it was broken by Sachin Tendulkar in December 2005. He was the first person to score centuries in both innings of a test match three times. He was the first test batsman to score 10,000 test runs in a career and now stands at number 12 on the group of 13 players with 10,000 plus test runs. Gavaskar was widely admired for his technique against fast bowling, with a particularly high average of 65.45 against the West Indies, who possessed a four-pronged fast bowling attack regarded as the most vicious in Test history. His captaincy of the Indian team, however, was less successful. Turbulent performances of the team led to multiple exchanges of captaincy between Gavaskar and Kapil Dev, with one of Gavaskar's sackings coming just six months before Kapil led India to victory at the 1983 Cricket World Cup. Gavaskar is a recipient of the Indian Civilian Honours of the Padma Shri and the Padma Bhushan. In 2012, he was awarded the Call C. K. Nayadu Lifetime Achievement Award for Cricket in India. On 28 March 2014, Supreme Court of India appointed Gavaskar as the interim BCCI president primarily to oversee seventh season of Indian Premier League. The court also directed him to relinquish his job as a cricket commentator. <laughs> Domestic debut Born in Mumbai and a student of St. Xavier's High School young Sunil Gavaskar was named India's best schoolboy cricketer of the year in 1966 while playing for his school. He scored 246 asterisk, 222 and 85 in school cricket in his final year of secondary education before striking a century against the touring London schoolboys. He made his first class debut for Vizier Sultan Colts XI against an 11 from Dungarpur in 1966-67 but remained in Bombay's Ranji Trophy squad for the next two years without playing a match. An alumnus of Bombay's renowned St. Xavier's College, he made his debut in the 1968-69 season against Karnataka but made a duck and was the subject of derisive claims that his selection was due to the presence of his uncle Madhav Mantri, a former Indian test wicket-keeper on Bombay's selection committee. He responded with 114 against Rajasthan in his second match and two other consecutive centuries saw him being selected in the 1970-71 Indian team to tour the West Indies. Test debut <laughs> First Test match win in West Indies After missing the first test due to an infected fingernail, Gavaskar scored 65 and 67 not out in the second test in Port of Spain, Trinidad, hitting the winning runs which gave India its first ever win over the West Indies. First Test century and first series victory over West Indies He followed this with his first century, 116 and 64 asterisk in the third test in Georgetown, Guyana, and 1 and 117 asterisk in the fourth test in Bridgetown, Barbados. He returned to Trinidad for the fifth test and scored 124 and 220 to help India to its first ever series victory over the West Indies, and the only one until 2006. His performance in the test made him the second player after Doug Walters to score a century and double century in the same match. He also became the first Indian to make four centuries in one test series, the second Indian after Vijay Hazare to score two centuries in the same test, and the third after Hazare and Pali Umrigar to score centuries in three consecutive innings. He was the first Indian to aggregate more than 700 runs in a series, and this 774 runs at 154.80 remain the most runs scored in a debut series by any batsman. Trinidad Calypso singer Lord Relator Willard Harris wrote a song in Gavaskar's honor, the Gavaskar Calypso.
Topic: England tour. Gavaskar's arrival in England in 1971 for a three-test series generated substantial publicity in light of his debut series. He was unable to maintain his performance, making only two half-centuries. He was involved in controversy when taking a quick single from the bowling of John Snow. They collided and Gavaskar fell over. Snow was charged with deliberately barging into Gavaskar and was suspended. Gavaskar's 144 runs at the low average of 24, led some to question Gavaskar's worthiness in international cricket. England tour of India In 1972–73, England toured India for a five-test series, Gavaskar's first on home soil. He was ineffective in the first three tests, accumulating only 60 runs in five innings as India took a 2–1 lead. He scored some runs in the final two tests which India drew to complete consecutive series win over England. His first home series was largely disappointing, aggregating 224 runs at 24.89. His English critics were placated when India returned in 1974 and Gavaskar scored 101 and 58 in the second test at Old Trafford. He managed 227 runs at 37.83 as India were whitewashed 3-0. <laughs> <laughs> West Indies Tour Gavaskar's 1974–75 series against the West Indies was interrupted, playing in only the first and fifth and final test of the series against the West Indies. He scored 108 runs at 27, with an 86 bowled by Lance Gibbs at Bombay's Wankhede Stadium hosting the first test on this ground, the closest the Indian public got to see a century. The test was the start of a world record streak of 106 test appearances. The 1975–76 season saw three and four test tours of New Zealand and the West Indies respectively. Gavaskar led India in a test for the first time in January 1976 against New Zealand during the first test in Auckland when regular captain Bishan Betty was suffering from a leg injury. Standing in despite having scored only 703 runs at 28.12 since his debut series, Gavaskar rewarded the selectors with 116 and 35 asterisk. As a result, India secured an eight-wicket victory. He ended the series with 266 runs at 66.33. On the West Indian leg of the tour, Gavaskar scored consecutive centuries of 156 and 102 in the second and third tests, both in Port of Spain, Trinidad. These were his third and fourth centuries at the grounds. In the third test, his 102 helped India post four 406 to set a world record for the highest winning fourth innings score. The Indians' mastery of the Caribbean spinners on a turning track reportedly led West Indian captain Clive Lloyd to vow that he would rely on pace alone in future tests. Gavaskar totaled 390 runs at 55.71 for the series. First home test century Gavaskar was not to score a century on home soil until November 1976. In an eight-test century, three and five against New Zealand and England respectively, Gavaskar scored centuries in the first and last tests of the season. The first was 119 in front of his home crowd at the Wankhede Stadium, helping India to a victory. Gavaskar scored another half-century in the second test to end the series with 259 at 43.16. In the first test against England at Delhi, he was mobbed upon becoming the first Indian to reach 1,000 test runs in a calendar year. A steady series saw him finish with 394 runs at 39.4 with a century coming in the fifth test and two half-centuries. <laughs> Tour of Australia In 1977–78 he toured Australia, scoring three consecutive test centuries 113, 127, 118 in the second innings of the first three tests at Brisbane, Perth and Melbourne respectively. India won the third but lost the earlier two. He finished the five test series with 450 runs at 50, failing twice as India lost the final test and the series 3–2. Topic: 
India tour of Pakistan 1978–79 saw India tour Pakistan for the first series between the arch-rivals for 17 years. For the first time, Gavaskar faced Pakistani pace spearhead Imran Khan, who described him as, "...the most compact batsman I've bowled to." Gavaskar scored 89 in the first test and 97 in the second, which India drew and lost respectively. Gavaskar saved his best for the third test in Karachi, scoring 111 and 137 in the third, but was unable to prevent a defeat and series loss. His twin centuries made him the first Indian to score two centuries in one test on two occasions, and saw him pass Umrigar as India's leading test run scorer. Gavaskar finished the series with 447 runs at 89.40. Captaincy Gavaskar was captain of the Indian team on several occasions in the late 1970s and early 1980s, although his record is less than impressive. Often equipped with unpenetrative bowling attacks he tended to use conservative tactics which resulted in a large number of draws. During his tenure, Kapil Dev emerged as a leading pace bowler for the country. He captained India to nine victories and eight losses, but most of the games were drawn, 30. <laughs> First Test Series as a captain His first series in charge was a West Indian visit to India for a six-test series. Gavaskar's several large centuries contrasted with several failures. His 205 in the first test made him the first Indian to score a double century in India against the West Indies. He added a further 73 in the second innings of a high-scoring draw. After failing to score in the second test, he scored 107 and 182 not out in the third test at Calcutta, another high-scoring draw. This made him the first player in test history to achieve centuries in both innings of a test three times. He managed only 4-1 and one in the fourth test in Madras as India forced the only win of the series. He posted a fourth century for the series, scoring 120 in the fifth test at Delhi, becoming the first Indian to pass 4,000 test runs. He aggregated 732 runs at 91.50 for the series, securing India a 1-0 win in his first series as captain. Stripped of the captaincy Despite this, he was stripped of the captaincy when India toured England in 1979 for a four-test tour. The official reason given was that Srinivas Venkataragavan was preferred due to his superior experience on English soil, but most observers believed that Gavaskar was punished because he was believed to be considering defecting to World Series cricket. He started consistently, scoring four half-centuries in five innings of the first three tests. It was in the fourth test at the Oval that he produced his finest innings on English soil. India was 1-0 down needed to reach a world record target of 438 to square the series. They reached 76 over 0 at stumps on the fourth day. Led by Gavaskar, India made steady progress to be 328 over 1 with 20 overs remaining on the final day with a record-breaking victory still possible. An Ian Botham-led fight back saw Gavaskar removed, with India still needing 49 runs from 46 balls. With three balls left in the match, all four results were possible. India ended nine runs short with two wickets in hand when stumps were drawn. According to Sanjay Mandrakar, it was Vintage Gavaskar, playing swing bowling to perfection, taking his time initially and then opening up. Nothing in the air, everything copybook. He ended the series with 542 runs at 77.42 and was named as one of the Wisden Cricketers of the Year. <laughs> Restored to captaincy Gavaskar was restored to the captaincy for the gruelling 1979-80 season, with six test home series against both Australia and Pakistan. The first two tests against Australia were high-scoring draws where only 45 wickets fell, with India taking a first innings lead in both after making scores over 400. India broke through for a 153-run win in the third test at Kanpur, where Gavaskar scored 76. 
He made 115 in the fourth test in Delhi, where India were unable to convert a 212-run first innings lead, resulting in a draw. After another stalemate in the fifth test, Gavaskar scored 123 in the sixth test, where Australia collapsed by an innings after India posted their fourth first innings in excess of 400 for the series. The series against Pakistan was similarly high scoring, with four draws, three of which did not reach the fourth innings. India won the third and fifth tests in Bombay and Madras. At Madras, he made 166 in the first innings and was unbeaten on 29 when India brought up the winning runs. Having secured the series 2-0, Gavaskar was removed from the captaincy for the drawn sixth test. This occurred because Gavaskar had refused to tour the West Indies for another series immediately afterwards, asking for a rest. As a result, Gundapa Viswanath was appointed so that he could prepare his leadership skills for the tour. In the end the tour did not go ahead as the West Indian board were not interested in a team without Gavaskar. The season ended with a one-off test against England in Bombay, which India lost. In the 13 tests that season, he made 10-27 runs at 51.35 with three centuries and four half-centuries. This ended a 14-month span in which Gavaskar played in 22 tests and the 1979 Cricket World Cup. In that time, he scored 2,301 test runs including eight centuries. Australian tour The 1980–81 season saw Gavaskar returned as captain for the Australasian tour, but it was to be the start of an unhappy reign for Gavaskar and India. He managed only 118 runs at 19.66 in the three tests against Australia, but his impact in Australia was for a controversial incident. At the Melbourne Cricket Ground, when Gavaskar was given out by the Australian umpire Rex Whitehead, he ordered his fellow opener Chetan Chohan off the field. Instead of abandoning the match, the Indian manager, S. K. Durrani persuaded Chohan to return to the match which India went on to win by 59 runs as Australia collapsed to 83 in their second innings. India drew the series 1-1 but the following three test series in New Zealand was to signal the start of a barren run of 19 tests under Gavaskar of which India were to win only one and lose five. India lost to New Zealand 1-0, with Gavaskar managing 126 runs at 25.2. He finished the Oceania Tour with 244 runs at 22.18, with only two half-centuries, making little impact. England in India The 1981–82 Indian season saw a hard-fought 1–0 series win over England in six tests. India took the first test, before five consecutive draws resulted, four of which did not even reach the fourth innings. Gavaskar made 172 in the second test at Bangalore and reached a half-century on three further occasions to compile 500 runs at 62.5. India reciprocated England's visit in 1982 for a three-test series, which was lost 1-0. Gavaskar made 74 runs at 24.66 but was unable to bat in the third test. Sri Lanka tour The 1982–83 subcontinental season started well for Gavaskar on an individual note, as he made 155 in a one-off test against Sri Lanka in Madras. It was the first test between the two nations, with Sri Lankan having only recently been awarded test status. Despite this, India were unable to finish off their novice opponents, the draw heralding a start of a winless summer. India played in 12 tests, losing 5 and drawing 7. The first series was a six-test tour to Pakistan. India started well enough, drawing the first test in Lahore, with Gavaskar scoring 83. Pakistan then defeated India in three consecutive matches. In the third test in Faisalabad, Gavaskar managed an unbeaten 127 in the second innings to force Pakistan into a run chase, but the other two losses were substantial, both by an innings. Despite holding on for draws in the last two tests, Gavaskar was replaced by Kapil Dev as captain after the 3-0 loss. Despite his team's difficulties, Gavaskar remained productive with 434 runs at 47.18 with a century and three half-centuries. 
Gavaskar went on to the West Indies for a five test tour purely as a batsman, but could not reproduce the form that he had shown in the Caribbean in 1971 and 1976. He managed only 240 runs at 30, as India were crushed 2 0 by the world champions. Apart from an unbeaten 147 in the drawn third test in Georgetown, Guyana, his next best effort was 32. The 1983-84 season started with a home series against Pakistan, with all three matches being drawn. Gavaskar scored an unbeaten 103 in the first test in Bangalore, and made two further half centuries to total 264 runs at 66. Topic. Overtaking Bradman's test record The Pakistan series was followed by a six-test series against the touring West Indies at the height of their powers. The first test was held in Kanpur and India were crushed by an innings. Gavaskar had his bat knocked out of his hand by a hostile delivery from Malcolm Marshall before being dismissed. In the second test in Delhi, Gavaskar delivered his repose to Marshall, hooking him for a consecutive four and six to start his innings. Gavaskar, unwilling to be dictated to by the Caribbean pacemen, hooked the short-pitched barrage relentlessly, reaching his half-century in 37 balls. He then went on to score 121, his 29th test century in 94 balls in his 95th test match, equaling Don Bradman's world record. He also passed 8,000 test runs in the innings, and was personally honoured by Indira Gandhi, the Prime Minister of India at the ground. The match was drawn. Gavaskar's 90 in the third test at Ahmedabad saw him pass Jeff Boycott's test world record of 8,114 career runs, but was insufficient to prevent another defeat. During the fifth test in the series, India were defeated by an innings at Calcutta to concede a 3-0 series lead. India had won only one of their 32 most recent tests and none of their last 28. The crowd singled out the Gavaskar, who had made a golden duck in 20. Angry spectators pelted objects onto the playing arena and clashed with police, before stoning the team bus. In the sixth test in Madras, he compiled his 30th test century in his 99th test match, with an unbeaten 236 which was the highest test score by an Indian. It was his 30th Test century and third double century against the West Indies, propelling him to overtake Donald Bradman's 29 Test centuries record. He had aggregated 505 at 50.50 for the series. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Failure to win for successive Test. With India having failed to win for 29 successive tests, Koppel was sacked as captain and Gavaskar resumed leadership at the start of the 1984-85 season. The two-test tour of Pakistan resulted in two further draws, with Gavaskar compiling 120 runs at 40. The first test against England saw India break through for its first test victory in 32 matches. It proved to be a false dawn, with England squaring the series 1-1 in Delhi before another controversial third test at Eden Gardens in Calcutta. The hostile crowd watched as India batted for over two days to reach 7 437 after 203 overs. Angry with the slow pace of India's innings, the crowd chanted, Gavaskar down! Gavaskar out! Blaming him for India, performance. The local police chief reportedly asked Gavaskar to declare to placate the angry crowd. When Gavaskar led his team onto the field, he was pelted with fruit. Gavaskar vowed never to play at Eden Gardens again, and duly withdrew from the team for India's next fixture at the Bengali capital two years later, ending his record of 106 consecutive tests. The match was drawn, but India conceded the series after losing the fourth. The series ended 1-2, and with a poor display of 140 runs at 17.5, Gavaskar resigned, although he had already announced his intention to relinquish the leadership before the series. The change of captain improved the form of neither Gavaskar nor India as they toured Sri Lanka for a three-test series. India were embarrassed 1-0 by the test minnows at the time, with Gavaskar managing only 186 runs at 37.2. Topic. International farewell In 1985–86, India toured Australia, playing against a team in a poor form slump. India were unable to capitalise as all three tests were drawn, but Gavaskar did. 
He scored an unbeaten 166 in the first test in Adelaide and 172 in the third test in Sydney, ending the series with 352 runs at 117.33. A three-test tour of England saw him score only 185 runs at 30.83, which India won 2-0 despite his unproductivity. In 1986–87, Gavaskar's final season in test cricket, India faced a long season of 11 home tests. Against a team regarded as the worst to leave Australian shores, Gavaskar made 90 in the second innings of the first test in Madras now Chennai, giving India a chance to reach the target of 348, which ended in a tie. He scored 103 in the third test to end the series with 205 runs at 51.66. The first test against Sri Lanka in Kanpur saw Gavaskar's 34th and final test century of 176. He scored 74 and 5 in the next two tests as India won the three-match series 2-0. The five-test series against arch-enemies Pakistan was to be his last. Gavaskar scored 91 in the drawn first test in Madras before withdrawing from the second test in Calcutta as he had promised. In the fourth test in Ahmedabad, Gavaskar's 63 made him the first batsman to pass 10,000 runs. With the teams locked 0-0 leading into the final test in Bangalore, there was to be no fairy tale. Gavaskar was dismissed for 96 in the second innings as India were bowled out to give Pakistan a 1-0 series win. <laughs> Style Gavaskar was also a fine slip fielder and his safe catching in the slips helped him become the first Indian excluding wicket keepers to take over a hundred catches in test matches. In one ODI against Pakistan in Sharjah in 1985, he took four catches and helped India defend a small total of 125. Early in his test career, when India rarely used pace bowlers, Gavaskar also opened the bowling for a short spell on occasions if only one pace bowler was playing, before a three-pronged spin attack took over. The only wicket claimed by him is that of Pakistani Zahir Abbas in 1978-79. While Gavaskar could not be described as an attacking batsman, he had the ability of keeping the scoreboard ticking with unique shots such as the late flick. His focus of technical correctness over flair meant that his style of play was usually less suited to the shorter form of the game, at which he had less success. His infamous 36 not out in the 1975 World Cup, carrying his bat through the full 60 overs against England, led Indian supporters to storm the field and confront him for scoring so slowly when India needed nearly a run a ball to win. At the end of the game India had lost only three wickets but scored 200 runs less than England. Gavaskar almost went through his career without scoring a one-day century. He managed his first and only ODI century in the 1987 World Cup, when he hit 103 not out against New Zealand in his penultimate ODI innings at Vidarbha Cricket Association Ground, Nagpur. Topic records and achievements Gavaskar was the first test cricket player to make over 10,000 runs. He held the record for the highest number of test centuries 34 before Sachin Tendulkar went past him in 2005. He broke Donald Bradman's record 29 test centuries going on to get 34. He has the highest runs 774 maker by a debutante. He has scored the most runs by any player in a series 774 against West Indies. He has the maximum no of runs and centuries scored by a player against West Indies 2,749 runs and 13 centuries. He is the only cricketer to score four consecutive centuries at two venues, Port of Spain and Wankhede Stadium. He is the only cricketer with 58-century partnership with 18 different players. He is a joint holder of the record for scoring centuries in both the Test match innings on three separate occasions along with Australia's Ricky Ponting and David Warner. He also became the first Indian fielder excluding wicket keepers to get over a hundred catches in test cricket. He captained the national team on and off over a period between 1978 and 1985, which included a great 2-0 win over Pakistan in 1979-80. He was named one of the Wisden Cricketers of the Year in 1980. He has scored 127 not out in the Faisalabad Test in the year 1983 and became the first Indian to carry the bat in a test match. Topic. Important statistics 
Test debut, West Indies v India at Port of Spain, 6–10 March 1971 Last test, India v Pakistan at Bangalore, 13–17 March 1987 ODI debut, England v India at Leeds, 13 July 1974 Last ODI, India v England at Bombay, 5 November 1987 First class span, 1966–1987 First class debut, Vizier Sultan Colts XI v Dungarpur 11 at Hyderabad, 1966–67 Last first class match, Rest of the World v MCC at Lourdes, 1987 Wisden Cricketer of the Year 1980 List A Span, 1973–1988 Gavaskar's 100s in first class cricket. Tests, 34 Ranji Trophy, 20 Irani Cup, 3 Duleep Trophy, 6 Rest of the World against England his last first-class game, 1 County Cricket for Somerset, 2 Other games, 15, Sachin Tendulkar equaled Sunil Gavaskar's record of first-class 100s on 8 February 2013 Gavaskar was the first cricketer to play 100 consecutive test matches. Topic. ICC match referee records Test debut, West Indies v England at Kingston, first test, 1993–94 Test appearances, 1 ODI debut, West Indies v England at Bridgetown, first ODI, 1993–94 Latest ODI, West Indies v England at Port of Spain, fifth ODI, 1993–94 ODI appearances, 5 Post-playing career After retirement, he has been a popular, if sometimes controversial commentator, both on TV and in print. He also served as an advisor to the India national cricket team during the home series against Australia in 2004. He was the chairman of the ICC Cricket Committee until the time he was forced to choose between commenting and being on the committee. He left the committee to continue his career as a broadcaster. The inaugural Mansur Ali Khan Patauta Memorial Lecture was given by Gavaskar on 20 February 2013 at Taj Karamandal, Chennai. In 2003, he became the first until now the only Indian to have delivered a MCC spirit of cricket cowdery lecture. He was the third lecturer in the history of the Cowdery Lecture. <inaudible> Entertainment career Gavaskar also tried his hand at acting on the silver screen. He played the lead role in the Marathi movie, Savli Premashi. The movie did not receive much appreciation though. After many years he appeared in a guest role in a Hindi movie, Malamal. He has sung a Marathi song, Ya Dunayamadya Thambayala Vel Kanala, which was written by noted Marathi lyricist Shantaram Nandgayankar. The song depicted the similarities between a cricket match and real life. It had become popular. Honours <laughs> 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 In 1980, Gavaskar received the Padma Bhushan Award for his successful international career representing Team India from the former Indian President Neelam Sanjeeva Reddy. On December 22, 1994, Gavaskar was sworn in as Bombay Sheriff, an honorary post, for a year, at Raj Bhavan in Mumbai in the presence of former Governor P. C. Alexander and former Chief Minister Sharad Pawar. In 1996, the Border Gavaskar Trophy has been instituted in his co honour. It was decided that any bilateral test series between India and Australia will be called as Border Gavaskar Trophy, named after iconic players Alan Border and Sunil Gavaskar. Both these players scored more than 10,000 runs in their respective test careers and captained their teams. Gavaskar Stadium, in his home district of Vengerla has been named after him. In 2003, he became the first until now the only Indian to have delivered a MCC spirit of cricket cowdery lecture. He was the third lecturer in the history of the Cowdery Lecture. On November 21, 2012, Gavaskar was conferred with BCCI's prestigious call. 
CK Nayadu Lifetime Achievement Award at the BCCI Annual Awards Function 2011-12. The Lifetime Achievement Award given to Gavaskar carried a citation, trophy and a check for 25 lakh rupees and he received this award from then BCCI President N. Srinivasan. On October 15, 2017, Gavaskar inaugurated a cricket field in Louisville in the state of Kentucky in United States, thus making it the first international sporting facility named after an Indian sportsperson. The Sunil M. Gavaskar Cricket Field Serves as the home ground for the Louisville Cricket Club, which is part of the 42-team Midwest Cricket League. Gavaskar was presented the keys of the ground by Louisville Mayor Greg Fisher. <laughs> <laughs> Written works Gavaskar wrote four books on cricket, including his own autobiography Sunny Days, an autobiography, 1976 Idols, 1983 Runs in Ruins, 1984 One Day Wonders, 1986 Controversies In a notorious ODI performance in 1975, he opened the batting and managed just 36 not out off 174 balls, scoring just 1-4. Replying to England's 334 from 60 overs, India managed only 132 for 3 from the 60 overs. It was printed in a local Indian newspaper that, England won but could not get Gavaskar's wicket. In Hindi, which was mainly due to outside the leg stump bowling from English bowlers, which is considered wide in ODI these days. On 25 March 2008, Malcolm Speed, ICC chief executive, told Gavaskar, very clearly, during a meeting between the two at Dubai, that he would have to quit his post at the ICC if he failed to give up his job of commentator and newspaper columnist, in which capacity he has frequently criticized his employers and leveled serious accusations of racism. He sparked a controversy in early 2008 for his comments on the contentious Sydney Test match. Millions of Indians want to know if it match referee Mike Proctor's verdict against Harbhajan Singh was a white man taking the white man's word against that of the brown man. Quite simply, if there was no audio evidence, nor did the officials hear anything, then the charge did not stand. Despite the fact that Gavaskar's comment referenced Mike Proctor and not the ICC, Australian writer Gideon Hay said that, if Gavaskar genuinely believed this, then he should almost certainly resign, for if the ICC is a bastion of white man's justice, Gavaskar bears some of the blame for having failed to change it. He has recently been selected as the interim president of BCCI replacing N. Srinivasan. Topic personal life Born in a Marathi-speaking family to Meenal and Manohar Gavaskar, Gavaskar is married to Marshneel Gavaskar Maratra, daughter of a leather industrialist from Kanpur. Gavaskar family originates from God Saraswat Brahmins of Goa. Their son, Rohan, was also a cricketer who played 11 one-day internationals for India, but could not cement his spot in the team. Rohan was given the name Rohan Javishwa by his father as a tribute to his three favorite cricketers, Rohan Kanhai, M. L. Jaisima, and Rohan's uncle, Gundapa Viswanath, although his name is usually recorded as Rohan Sunil Gavaskar. His maternal uncle was retired Indian cricketer Madhav Mantri. His sister Kavita Viswanath is married to cricketer Gundapa Viswanath. His other sister, Newton Gavaskar was the Honorary General Secretary of Women's Cricket Association of India WCAI. Gavaskar is an ardent devotee of Bhagavan Shri Sathya Sai Baba. <laughs> <laughs> International awards <laughs> One-day International Cricket Man of the Match Awards See also List of international cricket centuries by Sunil Gavaskar List of cricketers who have scored centuries in both innings of a test match Sources 
Brown, Alex. Gavaskar Slams White Man Ban. The Age, the 14th of January 2008. Hay, Gideon. Gavaskar's Double Role. Crescinfo, the 15th of January 2008. Retrieved the 22nd of November 2008.